Well, hello. Uh, Big House here, and I'd like to say a few words about a discovery I found in the Smithsonian. The discovery was the deadliness of the flint arrowhead. And you all are familiar with Indian arrowheads, of course. Now, I am of the Iroquois Mohawk Nation, and the Mohawks were called the Keeper of the Flint. This meant that they were a very warring, hard-to-get-along-with tribe that fought with everybody, but their specialty was making flint arrowheads, uh, flint knives, axe, war axes, regular axes, hoes, uh, spearheads out of flint, which is a very hard, very, very hard, brittle stone. And it can be broken along the edge to form a surgical edge that is so sharp, it ends up being 300 times sharper than any stainless steel metal edge for a surgical tool. This becomes very important to people who are doing cosmetic surgery or very minute microsurgery that they don't want to leave a scar. The edge was so sharp in old Indian history as you study it, they find that the arrowhead was so sharp you didn't even feel it go into you. And as I'm in the Smithsonian in American history, down in the basement, they had a collection of bones, and they're talking about human vertebrae, uh, deer bone, elk, buffalo, you name it. They had these bones with flint arrowheads embedded, grown right into the bone that had been there a long time. It intrigued me, so I asked the curator, how is this possible? And they said, well, we studied this because we wanted to learn how Indians would bring down a thing like an elk or a bear or a buffalo, especially a buffalo, with simply using an arrowhead. And what we found was that the flint arrowhead was the most dangerous weapon for thousands of years in the Indian world before gunpowder and guns and rifles. You see, the edge is so sharp, it's 300 times sharper than a scalpel. And the shape, this isn't a true shape because it's stone, but you can see the end of this is tapered. The entire arrowhead would be tapered like this, and as it went in the body, it would be tied onto this shaft. The shaft is split, and it's tied on with sinew, untanned sinew. Now, sinew is the fiber that pulls, that connects to the bone and pulls the muscle, but when you take untanned sinew and wet it, it stretches like crazy. When it dries, it's harder than cement. There's no way to take it off. So as this arrow would penetrate the buffalo, the blood and the liquid from the animal would wet this sinew, and the sinew would stretch and let the arrowhead fall off the shaft. The shaft would fall away, and you can see it's in a point so it won't pull out. The shaft would fall away, and the arrowhead is so sharp and it's tapered, the muscles would start pushing on it and push this arrowhead right through the body until it either cut a major organ or a artery or hit a bone to stop. And there are legends of the warriors coming back and after a week looking and seeing an arrowhead, a flint arrowhead coming out of the other side of their body where it travels straight through. So, this was a very deadly implement in the fact that all you had to do is put as many arrows into a single buffalo. They'd pick one buffalo that they were going to um, harvest, and they would put as many arrows into that buffalo as they could. Because when these started traveling through, all they had to do is follow the blood, the blood trail of the buffalo, and in a day or so, that buffalo would drop. Now... It's the same with humans, it's the same with deer, elk, bear, you name it. And they had those bones in there too with flint arrowheads that had traveled all the way to the, till it hit the bone and then the bone grew over the top of the arrowhead till you couldn't get it out. So it is, like I said, the most deadly weapon for thousands of years, the Indian arrowhead.